Tariq Woolen was drafted in the fifth round by the Seahawks in last year's draft, and he's been an important part of the best rookie class in the NFL. Through nine games, he's been targeted 39 times, and he's given up 22 receptions for 282 yards and two touchdowns, but he's also had three pass breakups and four interceptions. The NFL's never really seen a cornerback with Tariq Woolen's size-speed combination. He's six foot four, but he ran a 4.26 in the 40-yard dash, which was the third best in combine history for a player over six feet tall. You see the speed right here in breaking routes from outside leverage is something that Tariq Woolen still needs to improve on. When you look at 232 yards allowed, and we're going to get into some of the plays that he's given up, but a lot of them are just cover three or quarters and he's playing with outside leverage, given a lot of cushion and they just throw kind of a quick over route, get 15 yards. A lot of these plays are just unavoidable based on the coverage that he's in. But I think that's the next step for Tariq Woolen when it comes to improving his game. You see him on this play against LA. The length is so important when he's trying to break up this pass from behind the receiver without making contact. But Tariq Woolen's going to add most of his value throughout his career by playing press man and locking down X receivers on the outside. His arm length allows him to be so disruptive at the line of scrimmage. And in the NFL, most passing concepts are based on timing. So when you add a second and a half, two seconds to the beginning of a receiver's route, it completely throws off the timing of the play. And a lot of times it forces the quarterback to go to another read. The game plan for pretty much every offense in the NFL is find the rookie cornerbacks and target them. And week one was a perfect example of that. The Broncos were trying to pick on Tariq Woolen with Cortland Sutton. They targeted him on three go routes and and I think you could make the argument that Tariq Woolen won all three reps. So this first one, Cortland Sutton kind of slows down his route at the end. Looks like a miscommunication as far as where Russell Wilson was going with the ball. But when you get 10 yards downfield, if you have not stacked Tariq Woolen and you're running a go route, he's just going to punch the shoulder, stay on top of you and work the sideline. Next play, he gets called for a pass interference, but this is borderline at best to me. I do tend to side with defensive backs a lot more on these calls but I think this is really good technique. Inside hand punch, gets stacked a little bit, but he stays in phase. And this to me is just an example of how difficult it is to defend underthrown passes because he's in phase. He does a great job trying to turn around and play the football, but Cortland Sutton is upfield and then he's trying to work back to the underthrown pass and Woolen gets kind of tangled up. Not sure that I would have called this as a DPI. And then the third play is just a textbook press coverage rep. Again, he loves to be aggressive with his hands because he's got the speed to keep up down the field. And even though he does have a little bit of stiffness in his hips, he does a really good job of using his punch and press coverage to propel himself downfield and help him transition a lot more smoothly. And then being able to turn around and play the ball like this against Cortland Sutton in your first ever NFL start is just so impressive. This play against the Cardinals, he doesn't jam at the line, but he does a great job using the sideline. No issues matching NFL speed on the outside. Makes a great play on the ball right here. So like I said, Tariq Woolen has four interceptions this season. If I had to pick, I would say this is the most impressive one. He's in a press alignment, but the Seahawks are running a cover three fire zone. So he's bailing to the deep third. Chris Olave gets behind his field of vision, runs a comeback to the sideline, and Tariq Woolen stops his momentum, full extension, lays out and gets an incredible interception. The ability to stop quickly out of a backpedal is something that I thought Tariq Woolen might struggle with in the NFL. Just being six foot four and having a high cut, lanky build, it's really difficult to be backpedaling full speed and then stop on a dime and defend a deep curl. But his acceleration and start stop ability has been really impressive to me. If you just look at the numbers, Tariq Woolen is technically giving up a good amount of yards, but there's really only a few plays that are genuinely bad reps. This first one is third and four. Woolen's playing press man on Marquez Callaway. He lands the punch with the inside hand. Marquez Callaway starts his release outside and that gets Tariq Woolen to declare his hips. Callaway breaks inside and converts on a quick slant. But when you watch the plays that Tariq Woolen's given up all at once, and I watched every single target this year, he's in great position on so many of these plays. So my thought going into this video was that Tariq Woolen was more of a boom bust corner that's getting a lot of pass breakups and interceptions, but is also getting beat a lot. And that's just not the case. If a few of these passes were thrown with slightly less perfect ball placement, and a few of these receivers weren't making incredible catches in traffic, Tariq Woolen's stat line for the season would look a lot better better than it already does. And so when I watch film on a player, even if they're giving up some plays like this, if the technique is still good, I expect the results at the catch point to regress back to the mean and sort of balance out. And particularly with Tariq Woolen, who's shown the ability to break on passes and disrupt at the catching window. 
for corners in the NFL as a rookie, and his ceiling is literally being the best cornerback of all time. That's not to say that he's gonna reach that, but cornerbacks with his athletic build just don't come through the NFL very often. Sauce Gardner is really the closest comparison that you could make as far as recent players. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any players or teams that you'd like film breakdowns on.